Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so last episode was actually the first episode. So um, we're new some vermouth here and uh, I reserved this to be the last of the group of nine episodes I recorded. I'm gonna sneeze, I know it. Um, anyway, um, just because vermouth can be very powerful and it can be kind of palate destroying. Um, so backstory on this. So. This, so this is, so, so what is it? So this is the T.W. Hollister and Company Oso de Auto Dry Vermouth. Um, so backstory on this. They contacted me, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't remember contacting them. They contacted me and said, hey, would you like to try our vermouths? I'm kind of like, uh, you know, vermouth is something I kind of should get into a little bit more. Because um, there are some really good vermouths I've had over the years. And it's a California company, they're making vermouth. And I was like, yeah, you can send me samples. So they sent me this and they sent me the Rosa, which is a sweet vermouth. And uh, the, the red one had something cracked or something, but it leaked. So I said, hey man, um, thanks for the vermouth. Uh, the red one leaked. And they're like, we'll send you another one. Cool. They sent me two, they sent me another one of these. So I said, hey, you sent me another dry vermouth, but I didn't really hear back from them. I'm on their mailing list though. Because they actually sent a, uh, they actually sent me an email, um, asking I think asking about this like a couple days ago. This is still like the tenth, eleventh of September. You're watching. Well, yeah, you're watching this on the twelfth. So yeah, a couple days ago. So um, a little history about them. <clears throat> so let's see. So they started with the name Hollister. Is believed to 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 have derived from holly, a common bush on the family manor in Gloucester and Terra, Latin for earth. So young William Wellows was born in winter, January 12, near Hanover, Ohio, to Felina and John Hollister, a direct descendant of Thomas Wells, fourth Col colonial government of Connecticut. Um, let's see. Um, so they moved from Ohio to California. This is uh, 1818. Uh, young William Wells was born. Um, and then he moved in 1852 to California. Um, or 1850s, they went back and forth, looks like. They brought a bunch of sheep with them. 10,000 sheep across the country from Ohio. Like, really? That's pretty, that's pretty legit. Um, let's see here. <laughs> then um, Stern's Wharf... Uh, is created by Hollister and Stearns. They, they go into partnership to, uh, in Santa Barbara to create Stearns Wharf, and that was 1871. <clears throat> uh, some about 1873 and the Trespass Act, effective in all counties, reforms for which Hollister had spent an entire decade fighting. This is marked by many as the greatest single contribution he made to agriculture. I don't know why. And while I could look it up, um, probably you, should, you guys on the web should explain what that trespass act is. Because it, it almost sounds like he was against it the way it was worded to me. But then it sounds like he was trying to pass this act. So, um, and see, anyway, so besides Stern's Wharf, Hollister helps finance uh, quite a few things in the Santa Barbara area. Um, and that was the 1879, 1880. Uh, Glen Annie Ranch, the Hollister's country estate, approached by its serpentine avenue of palms, was a world-class agricultural and horticultural experiment, complete with weeping acacias, alders, aborvitae from China, Montezuma, Cyprus, Abyssinian, Abyssinian bananas, and friendly beaches. Uh, they had a bunch of stuff there. 
It had a bunch of stuff there. And then, um, let's see here. So, 1910, the Hollister family homestead is founded. Current day, it produces several key botanicals infused in the vermouth. Um, let's see here. And that, that's, that's where the timeline ends. Then, uh, so to this vermouth. So it's made from a quality white wine. This vermouth is macerated with a unique blend of 12 botanical ingredients, including orange peel, chamomile, and rose hip. Um, I'm just going to read the rest here. Fruit forward and fruit forward and floral. This dry style of vermouth is enhanced by the subtle herbal notes of a long, pleasant finish. Number of bottles is a thousand. Thirty-seven bucks retail. Sixteen percent alcohol. They also say wormwood and hysop, which I actually don't know what hysop is. So um, anyway, they they give you a couple cards, and so. This one is about the vermouths themselves, and it's similar to what I just read to you off the website. And then they also have a couple cocktails that you can use the thing in. So they have the Hollister Takes Manhattan, Vermouth over Martini, and the Best Maraschino Cherries. Um, I won't read the... I'll try to post these on uh, with, with the thing. So, vermouth is an aromatized wine. It's wine, then they use botanicals of some sort, roots and spices and other kinds of stuff to aromatize it. Kind of think of it like the gin of wine. Kind of. So you can drink this straight on the rocks. I'm not putting any rocks in here. Usually used in cocktails. Um, we're gonna drink it straight so that the ice isn't, um, that's probably all I really need. So the ice isn't uh, diluting it. And it doesn't have to come from Italy. It can come from, actually a lot of vermouths are, a lot of quality vermouths come from France too. Oh, wow. That really smells good. I think I get more of the rose hip, which I shouldn't really know what rose hip is. I think it's just like floral. Let's look it up. Rose hip. We're gonna look these things up. I don't really know what they are. Rose hip is, also called rose haw and rose hep, is the accessory fruit of the rose plant. Oh, okay. Typically red to orange, but ranges from dark purple. Rose hips begin to form, blah, 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 blah. Um, let's look at the rest of this. Huh, interesting. Well, now I know what rose hip is. All right, what's well, hysop? H-Y-S-S-O-P, right? I saw plant. Uh, it's a genus of herbaceous and semi or semi woody plants in the family of whatever. Um, they're aromatic with, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, the leaves are narrow. So basically, it's a it's a it's a plant. It has like a purple flower to it. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's got it's got leaves and flowers. The leaves are narrow. Small blue flowers are born in the upper part of the branches during summer. By far the best species known is herb ice hysop, widely cultivated outside its native area of Mediterranean. They're both in the mint family, so uh, it's, it's part of the mint family. So it could have some minty quality to it. All right. I can kind of see that, but it was like it was like a fruity smell. They say orange, orange peel. Yeah, yeah, I can see the orange peel a lot in that. Yeah, so I can see why you make a Manhattan out of this. It smells really good. Let's taste it. It's very flowery. It's it's very flowery, and there's also this um, like cinnamon, like French toast thing going on. 
like maple syrupy, French toast, cinnamon, that type of spice component. Um, chamomile is coming through. The orange is coming through. Not necessarily, not necessarily certain of the wormwood. I mean, I've had absinthe, but absinthe is also very like licorice -y, anise like. Um, yeah, it's like really like that cinnamon brown sugar type of thing. Really tasty. Like, wow. Like, I could see you using this for cocktails to really give a cocktail a little extra kick, a little extra, like, uh, something to, to make it more distinctive than just your normal, just regular cocktail. And the floral, the floral aspect of it, is such that it's almost like like a bathroom soap. Nothing wrong with that. What if, what if I had, there's there's some stuff I've had wine-wise, it's like, I'm like, yeah, it smells like, you know, the violet bathroom soap. Um, it's usually like a white wine. I can't remember which one it is, but I've had it a couple times recently. Not the same brand, but like that style of wine. But there is a, like you walked into a, like, um, you know, a bathroom in a, in a hotel or fancy restaurant and so the the uh the soap is aromatic and it's like like they pumped they pump like the florals into like the into like the ventilation system there's there's a there's a hotel i swear to god that's what they do um <clears throat> on the river walk in san antonio and every time i walked into that hotel when i worked downtown it's like overwhelming like the floral like they must be pumping it through their their um, ventilation system for the lobby area. Anyway, this is like super nice. Guys, you did a great job. This is really cool. Legit, like a legit, like really nice vermouth that you could just sip on. I'd probably put it in a cocktail more than just sip on it, just because it's so floral, um, that type of thing. I think it'd be, it could really add some lift to a cocktail. But yeah, maybe instead of using a bitters, you use this for the aromatics. Yeah, man, really cool. All right, so with that said, it's eight, it's 1.20 in the morning. So if I want to practice with my drone tomorrow, I have to wait until 8.30, no, 9.30 to fly it. Eight hour rule. Because I actually swallow just a little bit of that. Plus, remember I've already talked about my policy is if I taste, I have to wait eight hours anyway. And it's still at 50%. So it's holding true. So I feel more comfortable using the, the Osmo Pocket as my travel camera for interviews. Um, it's interesting to see how hot the thing is going to get though, because I've been doing it now for uh, a good solid couple hours now, because I finished watching something around 11. Yeah, I think it ended at 11 and, uh, it's been a couple hours, you know, in between it's an hour and a half of at least an hour and a half of recording. And then there's little bits of time in between. So a good solid two hours of, of recording stuff and it's been on. So. I'm sure it's really hot to the touch. All right, so that's it. Again, I know this is the first, you're seeing this episode is the first of the group of nine, <laughs> but I did nine episodes today, so I'm done with that. Um, click the links above to friend me up. Click links below to learn more about uh, these guys and their, um, and their vermouth. It's super nice vermouth. Uh, I really wish they'd, I'd gotten the other one. Maybe they'll send me the other one and I can try that later on this year. Um, and then the um, Oregon trip, you know, send me some ducats to help me uh, get out to Oregon. Well, I'm already going, but help me offset the cost of that. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.